Hello everybody, my name is Peter Klapper from the School of Biosciences at the University of Kent in Canterbury and in this video clip I want to discuss with you how enzymes are affected by the pH of the surrounding environment. For many enzymes the correct pH is really important so that the enzyme can catalyze a specific reaction. If, for example, the pH is too low, so that means we have loads and loads of protons around, like that, uh, what can happen is that, for example, basic groups in the protein, so NH2, like that, and that is part of the protein, and we might have another NH2 group here, again part of the protein and that's our protein here that these NH2 groups these amino groups here become protonated if the pH is high and what you can see if this happens for example to these two NH2 uh, groups what will happen is that this neutral amino group it has no charge, is converted into now an H plus or, or an H group here that attacks it and the whole group becomes positive. And likewise we get another proton attached here and again this group now becomes positive. And you can imagine what happens if there are two positive groups next to each other. They repel each other and they will change the shape of the protein. So the protein might be now only like, like that with one of our amino groups here and the other one trying to get away as far as possible with here. So by adding protons, we change the charges of the uh, of the groups of the amino acid groups in the protein, and likewise, the same can happen. The same can happen when we have, for example, uh, carboxylic uh, acid groups in uh, the protein, and if we have a very low pH, so we have got lots of OH minus. The, uh, sorry, that's a, a high pH in this case, low proton concentration. So here these protons are taken away and what we are left with are actually uh, the groups without the protons. So we have COO, COO, and here this group would be negative. And you can imagine what happens if we've got two negative groups sitting next to each other. Again, they would repel each other and try to get away from each other as far as possible. So they might then again distort the protein and the protein might look like, well, something like that with a negative group here and a negative group here, which are trying to pull away from each other and get out of its, uh, each other's way as much as possible. Now, when we look at different enzymes and their activity and uh, measure that against, for example, pH of the environment, so here we have activity and here we have the pH, we see that different enzymes have a different behavior in different pHs. So for example, pepsin, here this enzyme is important for the digestion of proteins in the stomach. Now the stomach is a very acidic uh, environment. The pH in the stomach is around 1 to 2. Now pepsin has its most active pH at around pH 2. So you see here, here's this peak and pepsin is very active at pH 2. But if the pH gets higher, pepsin is no longer active. Chymotrypsin is a typical enzyme found uh, 
in the pancreas or released by the pancreas and it goes into the small intestine where the pH usually is uh, alkaline, so it's uh, around pH 8. And uh, chymotrypsin, again, is most active at pH 8. At pH 4, it is not active at all. And at pH uh, 10 to 11, again, is no longer active. So you, we get a typical activity curve for chymotrypsin, and that is pretty similar to the activity curve of pepsin. But then there are also other enzymes, like this acetylcholinotransferase. Uh, again, at low pH, it's not active, but uh, usually it's around pH uh, 7 that uh, it is nicely active. And uh, it is also active then when you look at higher pHs. So here, uh, the uh, if it is too alkaline, it doesn't uh, bother this enzyme. It's okay with that. Probably at pH 14, uh, the activity will go down, uh, but we don't have that here. So enzymes can behave very differently in uh, different pH environments. But it's very important that for each enzyme, we determine at which pH this enzyme is most active.